Hi guys, this is Ada Ojide from Med Lectures Express, back with another Clinical Pearl of the Day video with focus on acute rhinosinusitis. Resources used for the video include Netter's Internal Medicine, some USMLE uh, content, AAFP, and FP Notebook. What is rhinosinusitis? Rhinosinusitis is defined as the inflammation of the maxillary and ethmoid sinuses caused by poor mucociliary clearance, edema, and obstruction. It accounts for greater than 30 million visits in ambulatory care. It is more common in females than males. Age group include uh, 40s to 60s, and it is also common in some geriatric patients. Healthy sinus typically drain mucus from the epithelium into the ostea complexes for clearance. So the diagram or the picture on the left demonstrates a patent uh, ostea complex. It's patent. Here is an obstructed uh, sinus. It's edematous and there's an obstruction and there's not a free flow or drainage or clearance of the mucus. So um, healthy sinuses typically drain mucus from the epithelium into the ostea complexes. These are the ostea complexes for clearance through the nose and the throat. However, alteration precipitated by infection, irritants, polyps, anatomical dysplasia or hypertroph hypertrophy, such as tonsilla hypertrophy, autoimmune states can impair mucus clearance. This is because of edema and obstruction of the sinus ostea, demonstrated right here. Most commonly affected sinus in the adult population is the maxillary sinus. The second most common infection is frontal sinus. It carries a high risk of intracranial spread of sequela. Most common infection in the pediatric is the ethmoid sinus, ethmoid sinus. Main pathogen of acute sinusitis is viral. They include rhinovirus, influenza A and B, prior influenza virus, and so forth. Acute bacterial sinusitis is diagnosed when uh, symptoms uh, last for more than 10 days or the three to four days of symptoms with fever greater than 102. There's a double sickening in five to 10 days of presentation of symptoms. Pathogen include streptococcus pneumonia, hemophilus influenza, other streptococci, moraxella, catarrhus. The picture on the left illustrates a healthy sinus versus an infected sinus, sinusitis. Um, it also tells you the symptoms and at the bottom are icons to help you uh, promptly recognize the symptoms and you can use this for your reference. Hallmark symptoms include the following. Facial or sinus pressure, frontal headache, maxillary tenderness, odontalgia, orbital pain. Sinus pain is exacerbated by bending forward, eating, Late morning pain is also present. File nasal discharge can be purulent or green in color. Discharge is not considered bacteriogenic until greater than 10 days or double sickening or a patient presenting with fever um, in three to four days, uh, 102 degrees. Other symptoms include congestion, post nasal drip, anosmia, decreased sense of smell, hyponasal speech pattern, ear fullness, fever, myalgia, sore throat, 
sore throat has poor sensitivity unless there's a post nasal drip. Physical exam may show sinus tenderness, edema of the inferior turbinate. Transillumination may reveal fluid in the sinuses, but this has a limited sensitivity. Red flags include fever greater than 102, diplopia, periorbital edema, severe odontalgia, toothache, severe toothache, poor mentation, altered mental status. Diagnosis is clinical. It involves considering the duration of the illness and the course of the illness and the constellation of symptoms presented. These include, you know, the sinus pressure, um, congestion, obstruction, discharge, sense of smell, headache. So you have to take into consideration the whole clinical picture to be able to make um, an effective and appropriate diagnosis. On the left is a picture of the key recommendations for practice. I'm just going to give a quick overview of the content and then I'll move into the uh, treatment. Uh, key recommendations. Um, this, is, this was adapted from AAFP. In uncomplicated acute bacterial rhinosinusitis, watchful waiting is an appropriate initial management strategy when there is assurance of follow-up. So this is a grade A recommendation. Um, in patients with rhinosinusitis, antibiotic therapy is recommended if symptoms persist seven days or more with no clinical improvement or if symptoms worsen at any time. So it, it just goes back to what I said previously. If there's double signaling, if, there's, if symptoms are greater than 10 days, or if the symptoms are three to four days or four to five days, but there's persistent high fever, then it should be, at that point, you should start thinking of bacterial uh, rhinosinusitis. Uh, doxycycline and uh, respiratory fluoroquinolone may be used as an alternative to amoxicillin for treating um, bacterial rhinosinusitis in patients who are allergic to penicillin. Mild rhinosinusitis symptoms lasting fewer than 10 days can be managed with supportive care, including um, analgesics, intrana uh, intranasal corticosteroids, and saline um, irrigation, and that has a grade A recommendation. First line treatment for acute sinusitis include watchful waiting, Supportive care, saline spray, analgesics, mucolytics, such as mucinus, but this has limited efficacy or benefits. Topical decongestions, mass use of three days. Avoid afferin in peds. Use uh, neosinephrine instead. Systemic decongestions, not recommended, only showed minimal efficacy. Intranasal steroids offer minimal benefits, but may be helpful in patients with a atopic uh, presentation and uh, chronic sinusitis. Augmentin is recommended as first line for acute bacterial rhinosinusitis by IDSA because it covers H. influenza and Morexilla crotalis. Uh, treatment course is usually five to seven days or 10 days uh, minimum course. Use doxycycline, Levaquin. Um, Levaquin you use for individuals um, older than 16, clindamycin, third generation cephalosporin such as cefex, cefexim or cefepodoxim if allergic to penicillin. In communities with low threshold of beta-lactam resistance, um, also no recent ABT, a antibiotic exposure in three months, amoxicillin is prefer preferred. Amoxicillin is recommended by AAP for treatment 
in uncomplicated uh, pediatric cases. Acute sinusitis symptoms has a course of four weeks in some cases. Subacute sinusitis lasts from four to 12 weeks, and this is considered a temporal progression or a transient course. Um, refer to ENT for the following. Refractory symptoms greater than 12 weeks. So symptoms greater than 12 weeks is considered chronic sinusitis or recurrent episodes of uh, sinusitis. That's recurrent sinusitis. Complicated sinusitis just means extension of infection into the orbits and cranial structures. This requires uh, CT visualization. So the patient will need to have sinus CT. Refer for toxic appearing patient for toxic appearance, concerns for fungal sequelae, or fungal progression, or fungal infection, which is uh, when there is a sudden fulminant presentation. It has a high mortality rate and carries a high risk of extension of infection to the cranium. Refer for orbital cellulitis and a major red flag and a big one is cavernous sinus thrombosis, which is depicted in both pictures here. Um, this is a patient that has uh, orbital edema and this patient has chemosis and orbital edema. So um, cavernous sinus thrombosis just means that there is a blood clot in the cavernous sinuses behind the orbital socket. Symptoms include refractory headache, altered mental status, fever, chemosis, chemosis. Um, also refer for need uh, for maxillary sinus, antral puncture and aspiration. And also refer to ENT uh, when there's a need for endoscopic culture. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye.